Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dividend Growth Investing Channel. Today we're going to talk about something that's really discussed a lot on YouTube. Uh, it's about how to pick stocks, but with a little bit of a twist. Um, if you are tuning in for the first time or if you're coming back and you've you know watched a few of my videos uh, here on this channel, it's, it's really what we're trying to accomplish here is uh, achieving financial freedom through dividend growth investing. And what I'm going to be talking about today is how I go about picking dividend growth stocks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover a different video on ETFs. But in this video, I really want to just pinpoint how to pick dividend growth individual stocks and what to look out for and just primarily how I do it, um, how I've seen, where I've seen success with, uh, where to, you know, keep a particular eye out for, like what's, what are some red flags, things that you can save you a lot of money and stress and headache down the road. Um, so what you can see in front of you, this is my portfolio through M1 Finance. I've been sharing a few videos here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to do a portfolio update here and you'll see the link uh, at the end of the video to that video if you want to check out uh, where I'm going to go ahead and walk everybody through you know, where, where I'm at in my journey, what I've been focusing on these last couple of weeks and, and where we're at. So if you like the content, uh, please go ahead and, and hit the like button, subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with videos, do my best here every single week. Going forward, what I plan on doing is giving weekly updates on, on the portfolio, what's working, what's not working so well, what I'm focusing on, as well as throwing in, you know, bit, tidbits, things that are interesting to me and where, where I'm seeing a lot of people uh, struggle, uh, not only, you know, for with my, my friends and family, but also here on YouTube. And I'm going to be covering other topics like that as well. But for today, it's going to be all about how I particularly pick dividend growth stocks. So if that's interesting to you, stick around. We're going to go ahead and, and I'm going to walk you through pretty much step by step the, you know, how I approach dividend growth investing and how I pick stocks. All right. So a few things to remember. There are a ton of of great companies out there. There's a ton of great companies that have done well in the past that are maybe slowing down. There's also other companies that, you know, are maybe under our radar. And this video is not going to be just about the dividend aristocrats. I'm not going to be just looking at companies that have been paying their dividend, you know, paying increasing dividends over the last 25 years or even 50 years. Uh, I'm really going to be in this video covering what what are the essentials? What do you need to look out for when picking dividend uh, dividend growing stocks? All right, so a few things that I do, a few assets. Now, when I'm doing research or I'm looking for, for you know, inspiration, I love to read articles from, from a few websites like uh, SureDividend.com. If you're, if you're familiar with them, they are amazing. Now, these guys, they come out with a dividend. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in it by any means. Uh, they come out with a, you know, almost a daily newsletter on, you know, hot picks, things that are going on in the, in the market. But... This is a great resource, something that I personally use. Uh, they, some of the, um, the newsletters that I really particularly like are on individual companies like How Safe is uh, Chevron's Dividend, for example. Uh, the top, de top 10 best dividend stocks in 2019 and, and, and so forth. A lot of great content. If you also are looking for, okay, what are the dividend aristocrats? You can actually check, check out the list here. So this website, once again, I'm not affiliated with them. I, I love their content. This is something that I, I go to for when I'm doing my own research. Another great website that I like is simplysafedividends.com. Uh, Simply Safe Dividends, this also, once again, not affiliated with them. I use this website a lot for inspiration as well. You know, just when I'm, I'm looking to inform myself on, okay, what, what are other people doing? What are some other strategies or ideas? And, and I'm, I'm a big fan of these guys. I think they're, they're great. Uh, they actually have a service that you can purchase as well. I, I personally have not done it, uh, but I know that 
there's a lot of uh, features and information that they they provide on their website. So if you're looking for inspiration, this is a great way, a great resource uh, to do so. Another website that I use when I'm just doing my initial, initial research is dividend.com. Pretty pretty straightforward, right? Um, you know, you can when you're looking up individual companies, you can see all the essentials. What is the current yield? Uh, what is their payout ratio? How long have they been growing their dividend? Uh, and when looking at Dividend.com, one thing that I really like is, in particular down here, the dividend history. Now, if you're unfamiliar with, and we'll touch on this here in a few minutes, uh, ordinary versus quali so qualified versus non-qualified dividends. This is effectively the, uh, the rate in which you, you're taxed on the dividends. Uh, you'll also notice some companies like Unilever, uh, and, and other international based companies uh, will have an unknown here. It's because it's not a qualified or an ordinary, it's taxed a little bit differently. So if you're unsure, you can check it out here. This is also very, very important, you know, understanding the tax implication with your dividends, primarily if it's in a uh, taxable account, you know, a traditional IRA versus a Roth IRA, for example. So all things to take uh, take into account. Another tool that I, I really like or something that I um, use myself is the you know company screener. Now, I personally love using Dividend.com's screener. Once again, not affiliated. This is just some a, a tool that I use uh, when I'm doing my own research. Uh, something that I like about them is, you know, you can specify, okay, the size of the company, um, the the price, the payout. Uh, so when I'm doing my, when I'm looking at this, this is something that I'll cover here in a second is, you know, what are the essentials? I, I don't want a company that is paying out, you know, more than 60, 70% of their, uh, their, um, their cash, you know, what, what their, their income out to shareholders in form of dividends. In most cases, there are some, some cases where if it's a REIT or if companies like, for example, you know, your, your sin stocks like Altria or Philip Morris, obviously they're, they're paying, they have a higher pay, payout ratio, uh, and there's also a reason for it. So when you're looking to build out your, uh, your screener here, I, I love using Dividend.com. I think it's a, it's a great asset. Uh, and then you can filter it here by you know, the dividend yield, the dividend growth, this is uh, this is where I do a lot of my research when I'm just, you know, looking for for new companies that I want to explore, right? Another tool that I use is uh, Finviz. I, I love the map that they have here when I'm looking. At, okay, what's been happening in the market for the last year, six months, uh, month or, or week? Now I, I really like this. If you're seeing a dip, okay, well, uh, looking at it holistically here, well, what companies have been hit the most? Uh, do I want to take this opportunity and and uh, and jump on a few, uh, you know, increase my position in a few individual stocks? Uh, and then the next thing that I wanted to go over was uh, ETF.com. I'm not once again. I'm not going to talk about ETFs in this video. But when I'm looking for inspiration on what kind of stocks should I should I look into? Um, the Vanguard Dividend Dividend Appreciation ETF is a great ETF. It's Essentially, it's tracking companies that have increased their dividend for the last 10 years, and it's weighted by, by market cap, right? And what I want to get at is this. Now, if you're looking for inspiration, well, okay, well, what companies are part of the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, all right? And so Microsoft, Visa, Procter & Gamble, Walmart, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Comcast, all of these companies with the exception of two right here on the screen, I own in my portfolio. Um, and if you're looking for other, you know, other potential companies that, that you know or you're interested in, okay, well, actually, I didn't know that, for example, uh, this company or the, the you know, Echolab. What, well, what is Echolab? And then what, it's gonna, what you can do is then you can say, okay, well, Echolab, I wanna, you know, I've never heard of Echolab, let me, let me check them out. And then what you can do is you can come over to Seeking Alpha, for example, and you can check out the uh, the company uh, information in particular regarding their the dividend. 
Now, Echolab, this is also a company that I hold in my portfolio. They have a dividend yield of 0.93%. Very, very low, but on the surface. Now, we're, we're going to take a look at this. Okay, well, uh, if you're just looking for a high yield today, this isn't what we talk about on the Dividend Growth Investing Channel. All right, so if you're looking for like a 4 or 5% that you could easily get with, you know, T-Mobile, a Philip Morris and, and others or other utility stocks, that's that's not really what I'm what I'm talking about here with dividend growth investing. So when we look at the uh, the healthiness and we look at okay, what is this dividend? What what is this company offering us as dividend growth investors? Well, they have a fairly low starting yield, but they also have a very low payout ratio. And you can see here, okay, well, how long have they been growing their dividend? They've been growing it for 26 years. Then the next thing that I'm looking at is, okay, well, how quickly are they growing that dividend? And you can see here for the last year, three years, five years, and 10 years, over the last 10 years, they've grown at 12%. Now, this is not a ton. You know, if you're looking at this where it's less than 1%, you know, I would be hoping that they're growing at 15 or 20%. So I'm not going to have this on my, you know, my top 10 holdings when it comes to dip my dividends. And, uh, you know, my, my companies that I'm, my core. Another thing that you can look at is the history. Well, are they consistently, you know, growing their their dividend. What is their dividend history? You can take a look at here. And something that I'm particularly focused on is well, how did they do during the, the Great Recession? Now you can see in this in this case, Ecolab actually increased their dividend during the financial crisis. Now this is huge. Now this is something that I'm looking for when I'm screening uh, potential companies that I want to bring on uh, for in my portfolio. Another thing that I'm looking at is the yield on cost. So the yield on cost has stayed pretty constant, uh, and you can look you know, over the last five years here. So not a lot has been going on in terms of the, the yield on cost for the last couple of years. Now you have to also understand we've been in a bull market for the last 10 plus years, so that's also something to, to factor in. Um, and one other thing that I, I want to make sure that I, I mention here, now this is incredibly important. Now, when you talk about, yeah, when, when picking stocks, we have to get into the balance sheet, we have to look in the income statement, and all of those things. Now, they're, they're important. If you're a professional investor, this, this is going to be really beginner stuff that I'm talking about here. But a few core essential things that I'm looking for when I'm looking into to you know, add a, a new company in my portfolio, I'm looking at the cash flow. It's all about the cash flow to ensure that the companies that we're investing in, that they have a sustainable model where they can continue to pay out uh, the dividend and they can continue not only pay it, but grow it, right? And so what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the cash from operations. Are they continuing, continually growing their, uh, their cash? Another thing that I'm looking at is repurchase of common stock. If they're able to repurchase their own shares, they, that's a, a buffer. If, if they were to hit, be hit by a financial crisis here in the next couple of years, they would likely cut that before they would cut the dividend. Okay, so they have a little bit of a buffer. So that's what I'm looking at. And so I'm looking at, okay, in addition to that, well, what are they paying in their, in their dividend uh, to their, you know, their stakeholders, as well as how much cash on hand do they have? They have plenty of cash to cover that dividend. So this is what I'm looking for in, in when I'm investing into companies that I want to add to my portfolio. All right, so what we talked about here, we talked about a few different websites that I personally use when I'm doing my research, when I'm looking for new companies, when I'm interested in adding additional companies to my portfolio. Uh, and I'm looking at, okay, the taxes, I'm looking at uh, everything, you know, the essentials. I'm not, I'm not going to dive into every single line, line by line, into the balance sheet. Like that's, that's not what I'm looking at. Obviously, I'm also going to look at their debt. How many, what, is the, what is the debt that the company is holding? And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are, are skeptical about T-Mobile because of the amount of debt. But this is, this is how I am, am analyzing stocks and how I'm picking them with a growth, a dividend growth mindset. So everybody, a short and sweet video here. I hope that this was he helpful. Um, 
If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a question in the, in the, in the comment section below. Uh, but for now, that's, uh, that's everything for this video. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.